looking for a great tutorial on how to create Death Eater masks. Today on Historical Recreations, I'll be showing you how to create one of these simply and easily. Join me. These are just paper masks that I picked up at the art store. And I gotta show you why I bought two of them to demonstrate this. Never, ever, ever buy a smile mask. So if you look very carefully, see how the cheeks are rounded over here? There's a big smile as if he's happy. You don't want this for a Death Eater mask. You want something like this. Serious and very well formed. The cheeks are down. And this actually is the woman style mask. I'm going to show you what the men's style mask looks like right next to it. You can see the, the men's style mask is larger and the woman's style mask is going to be smaller and the forehead is rounded. And this would be more like a Bellatrix style mask when we get it done. So let's now uh, start our mask and again, know the difference. So now with our mask, a very important element we need to work on here is in the nose, we need to create two nostrils right there. And we also need to open this area up in here. And what I'm using today just to do this is just punching a little hole in the nostrils like this with an awl. Be very careful with these. These machine, these uh, tools are sharp. And I'm also going to be doing the same for the mouth. So once I get this finished, I will show you what it looks like. There. So what I did was I punched a few holes and I also used an etcho blade and I made the mouth a little bit wider. Be very careful with knives. Knives are sharp. So now we have beautiful features, tiny nostrils and a tiny mouth. Later on we're going to create the bars that will go over the mouth as we know in all of the Death Eater masks. Alright, let's go on to the second level. Using our air dried clay now, we're going to start building up features of the mask. And today's color that I'm using is just white. I love this brand. It's called Amos. And you can get it basically anywhere online. It is made in Korea and it is incredible. I really love it. You can do anything with this. We're going to be building up around the eyes first because that's the most uh, I say macabre feature of the mask and then we'll be going to be putting some materials around the mouth to emphasize that. So let's start building around the eyes. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to pencil out the area of the eyes that we really want to emphasize. And this will give us a guideline to know exactly where to put the clay. So let's put our first layer of clay, making sure that we have a lip around both of the eyes. love using this material. It's just great. It's sticky and it's wonderful and it sticks to absolutely everything that it touches and uh, it can be kind of a, a blessing in disguise because you don't need any type of glues or anything to stick it on anything. Okay, once we get our eye material on there, we're going to start now molding and shaping this into proportion. So let me start molding this around the eyes and show you what it looks like when it's done. Molding and shaping the eyes is very easy. I'm just using a divot tool here to create divots in the clay. I made sure that the clay was smooth and went over on both sides. So once you get all of the clay around the eyes, you can just take one of these little 
divoted um, knives. And if you don't have one of these, you can actually use just a plastic knife from your uh, cutlery set that they give away uh, freely when you buy food. And we're going to create divots into the eyes. This is going to make it look like it was hammered metal when we're finished. And I'm going to really emphasize the shape of the eyes on our mask here by adding, you can see what I'm doing here. Don't worry about that because we're going to be adding more and more clay to this. Let's just create a divoted surface around, add this. So awesome to see this come to life. This is my second mask that I'm doing and I'm very happy to do kind of the, the Bellatrix style over here. This is going to be a different different style but we're going to do something slightly similar. Okay, now with this let's start adding clay to our nose and around here. I'm going to be leaving the forehead nice and smooth and then we're also going to be doing a technique where we're going to be applying some glue on here afterwards to really smooth out the paper so we can work on it. And again with this second mask let's also emphasize around the mouth area. So again we're going to put clay in around this and we're also going to be using our little divot making tool today. So let's do all that. On the mask, just pencil out where in fact and how big you want to create the area around the mouth. Because I really want the male and the female masks to be similar in look because they're going to look really, really cool during the exhibition. Um, I have an exhibition show coming up in this uh, fall so I want to put these on the wall to show so right here I think that looks really good and plus um no no we're gonna make it go like that alright so let's take this area out over the, the lip will become the lip will become the area so let's ignore that right there and just put the clay in this thing about working with air dried clay it only takes but a moment to spread this out with your fingers now once you've got your whole entire area done we're going to do two things today we're going to emphasize around the eyes and then we're also going to be using our knife again to create more divots in the clay now make sure you're moving your hands around so it looks like it's all been done by hand and we're going to smooth out all of this clay. So let's get all the, the divoting on there and then let's do the eyes. Once you get all the detailing done, I can show you right now that I also had overemphasized the eyes over here by adding a little bit of clay to make our eye area a little bit more deeper and darker. Now, once you get all the divots put in there and make sure you have all the surfaces because that's where the paint is going to go into. Done. Let's let this dry for 24 hours. It has been 24 hours and this came out incredible. This is all dry now. The first thing we're going to be using today is the first coat. We're going to be putting on here silver number 995. We're even going to coat over the paper, but there's a problem. There are teeny tiny little divots in the paper and we're going to uh, going to put a coating after the first coat of paint we're going to put a coating a sheer coating of white glue on here and that's going to create a really incredible sheen and we're also going to do it for down here but first project is paint the whole entire face with a silver number 995 acrylic so let's do that now while painting this a very important element make sure you get all of that paint in all the divots that we have done and also smooth your brush strokes out on the forehead make sure they're all going in the right direction we want nice smooth finish because we're going to be applying a coat of white glue on there very important on that just move it around 
coat the whole entire mask with silver. Don't be afraid to put it on there and coat away. Nice, smooth finish. Get down to the chin. Do that also. Keep smoothing that paint down. So we want to have a nice smooth forehead and a nice smooth chin. Once you get your mask completely done, you can just roll up some paper like I have done and stack it up like this so it's air drying on all sides. And then we're going to go into the next layer. Once our mask is completely dry, we're going to be coating these surfaces with white glue. Uh, it's a very, very important to coat out our forehead and the chin area with white glue. And the reason is we want to have it pure smooth. The original point of putting the silver paint down first of all was to create layer number one which is just fine just in case anything shows through we're going to have that silver backing and now going right up to the dimpling here we're going to be applying a coat of white glue and we're also going to do it down here to the chin once you get this completely coated follow the same direction as you did with the silver paint and smooth it out and then we're going to be doing the chin as well your surface smoothly let it dry and always wash out your brushes with lukewarm water for at least five to seven minutes making sure you get all of that glue because you'll be throwing this brush away if it dries I've been so waiting to show you this check out this sheen on there look at that isn't that amazing it's like the hood of a car smooth as silk now what we're going to do is we're going to paint one more coating of the aluminum paint over this and over this. The reason why we had done this, if you look very carefully, there is a micro dotting left from the printing press that produced this mask. And we don't want that. We want a nice smooth sheet of metal. So let's paint both the chin and the forehead with our aluminum paint one more time. Apply a very heavy amount on there because we have a large surface to do. And we're going to be just again following we're just going to be following it down following the shape and the pattern of our mask now a very important element with the masks here any element that you put for decoration on the right side needs to be mirror imaged on the left side and what is very important about this is does not have to be perfect. If you look at the original props used in the Harry Potter series and the Death Eater masks, they are not exactly perfect. There is such evidence that they were handmade and I loved it. And that's why I took the inspiration to make these masks this time around. So I'll be demonstrating how to create these spirals. I used a large permanent magic marker. Now anything that you make on one side of the mask like this curl add this very special little tail to it if you look at all the death eater masks anything that is spiraled like this has a little sub spiral on the side it just makes the element look so cool in there now how you can replicate this if you really wanted to you can just put this up to a mirror or some window or something and you can get a mirror image of it so that needs to be replicated on this side so let's now paint our mask let's apply some elements we're using the black permanent marker to make all of our marks now on our mask and whatever you do like i said whatever you do on one side you need to replicate it on the other side it's a little bit difficult with alignment but once you get used to it it takes a while because you've got to think a little bit backwards 
on the project. Okay, so here we need to add a spiral, 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 and we need to add a spiral. Go back in and make some areas darker and thicker in black. And what we're going to do is we're going to create the illusion that it was finished with a chisel with a very, very special marker. And after I get all the black on, I'm going to show you what we do. Once you got your design put on there the way that you want it, we're going to use a very special marker today. And you can get this at any craft store. It is a name pen and it is silver. And what we're going to do is going to cross hatch and make little tiny lines. Let me show you. We're going to create little tiny etch marks where it would look like a chisel cut into the surface of the metal. And once the mask is done, let's put the aging on. Today's color of choice again is the black number 999. And I'm going to dip my brush into here and create a slurry about one to three, just enough to create and slurry that will pour into all of these divots in our mask. This is the part you've been waiting for. This is the part that is really, really fun. And apply, and then we're going to take special interest around the eyes a little bit later. Once we start putting all of the aging on. So let's do this now coating the whole entire surface. The last and final element is putting the mouth pieces on there. As you can see, the ones that I had created on this one are very, very decorative. Uh, there's three small um, club-shaped ornaments on there. And I even put dimpling on the mouth clips that go there. I'm going to be doing the same to this mask too. So I'm getting out my air dry clay and I'm going to complete them. And then once those are dried, we're going to paint them, we're going to age them, and let's look at the mask in its entirety. Okay, so I got the mouth pieces on there. So let's let this dry and then we'll paint this. There you have two very unique Death Eater masks. Gothically yours, Professor M.